Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to what is hopefully going to be the second episode of What If History, Past, Present, and Future. Uh, my name's Brock Rells. I'm Zach Hartwood. And the topic that we're going to talk about today is what if the Capitol riots on uh, last year in the United States uh, were successful? Yeah, exactly. Um, seeing uh, seeing if we can basically uh, look at history and the fact of there's never been uh, a non-peaceful transfer of power in the United States. So I think it would be an interesting subject to go over to see uh, what if there was, you know, a uh, violent uh, installation of power in the United States. And, you know, it almost happened. So I think it's definitely a topic that's really, uh, worth going over. So let's unpack kind of what we were talking about before we started here. Again, this is coming back to the whole prefacing what you're going to talk about uh, with things that have happened, definitions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the one thing that we were talking about in the run-up to this video is, has there ever been a truly honest American election? And I think if you go back and you look at every single election, there's almost every single one you can find something that's like somewhat questionable unless it's a total landslide victory. But those are very rare yeah. because people tend to be on one side or the other. But like one of the ones that um, now this is Oliver Stone goes in it and, and one, I think it's an Oliver Stone documentary. It was on Netflix for a while. Um, and he talks about, I think they, it's the one in like American history X or something. I can't remember if that's the show that might be thinking of something else. That's a movie. He has, yeah, that's a movie. So he has a show, and he just talks about different pivotal times in American history. Um, and there's a lot of evidence to say that, um, like, the Democrats interfered in the uh, Kennedy-Nixon uh, election um, to the point that there was real contention on whether or not uh, a certain state, which I think JFK's brother was the senator of or the governor of at the time, um, well, they're not. He'd actually re- actually won that state. Um, well, what and- I wanted to go over was like, what do you even call a fair election, right? Because if we're talking, if we want to say a fair election is an election where there is literally zero outside interference, then you know, no election's ever been fair. Oh, I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that. Yeah, I think it's more than that. Cause- because. When you're talking about outside influence, you mean like Russia, and you mean like other countries no, and stuff not like that. E- I'm not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking outside influence as in like media influence, money influence, you know. So like if you know if you're if we're talking about in our in a modern structure where you can donate to political parties, like are those elections fair? Because you know the party again, that not has even more mentioning, money. not even mentioning using your uh, like when you're in power to gerrymander. Which oh, happens absolutely. all the time and in the United the States. It happens in Canada. Well, let's too. change. Let's let's change the. Uh, well, it doesn't as much. So our writings are more set in stone. But they do they, change. You know, they do. They do change. Well, I mean, it's changed, but it there is usually a reason. And and again, I'm not trying to say our system's perfect. Uh, we're based in Canada. For those that don't know, um, like most times when a new writing is created in Canada, it's it is directly correlated to um to the population growth of that area um and the other the other side is is that like you could actually look (laughs) in the states now and this is partially the way that american cities have been set up and again you could go and this could do a whole podcast on this um but very racially divided and so it's made it easy to just draw whatever lines you want around certain neighborhoods and then you create a riding that are mostly black people, and then you don't give them the resources to vote. No, it's true. And, and honestly, just the way townships and stuff are set up in the United States is completely different than the way it is in Canada, right? Um, yeah. It's, they, you know, they're, they're a lot more structured, for sure. Um, there's a lot of, like, uh, what do you call them? Um, unclaimed townships. I don't know exactly what you call them in Canada, but there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of areas where there is no municipal government at all, you know what I mean? Um, you know, like hamlets and stuff like that, but it, that's actually super uncommon because even like the smallest towns, like I think even like well, what they'll normally do is they'll roll a couple small towns into one, or two towns might have one council. That has whatever, happened right? a lot, yeah. Like they'll, they'll merge townships yeah. and stuff like that, and I think that happens in the states a lot too, though. Um, but even like the hamlet, the hamlet of Brock, which is like not too far outside of where you are, very small, like. 500 or less people, and I'm pretty sure they have their own 
like council and shit. Oh, oh well, that, it, it's really weird in Canada the way that works actually, because there's not even um, there's not like if you look at Bailey Bow for instance, um, which is a mm-hmm. town of like let's say that's a great example, maybe two hundred people at the most. I would that's say that's a great example. Um, they yeah. don't they don't have a town council, but they do elect a reeve. Um, which is a type of uh, part of the legislative s- representation, basically uh, part of the Cavan South Monaghan, yeah, yeah, council, yeah. So which is again a, a large, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot of weird different structures when we get down that low, but we should we shouldn't get too 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 uh, into that Bogged because down. I mean, um, yeah, we're talking more on a national scale here. Yeah. So 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 the other only other one I just want to bring up one more. Like I just want to bring up examples of where election results have been questionable. Um, and why they've been questionable. Another one, um, was the, the, I don't know, was, was it the first time or the second time Bush ran? It was the second, that, I believe, the, the Florida recount, I think. So it was, yeah, it, the Florida recount. 2000 who his, election. His, who his brother, Jeb, was in charge of. Like, I mean, it's so sketchy and questionable. Yeah. Like, there's, so my point is, and it, my point of what I'm trying to get is that Democrats and Republicans have done it. Oh, that's 100%. my point. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and like I said, there, there is a lot of stuff surrounding the, the Nixon, um, JFK election. And, um, uh, and, and, uh, Nixon could have actually legally challenged the results, but he didn't. And one of his famous quotes is that the, who the president of the United States is should never be in question. And that was his quote that, that came out, um, well, at that, that time. Yeah. And it was, but it was also, you got to keep in mind, the context of what was going on at that time. The Cold War was in full swing. Yeah. Um, like, America couldn't, couldn't be perceived to be a weak nation. It well, couldn't be look perceived at it now, that democracy, though. democracy is weak. Yeah, exactly. Um, but look that, now, man. Like, it's the exact I know, I know same thing is now. going on. I'm just like, saying. It correlates almost exactly. Like, Russia is flexing its muscles, uh, continuously, potentially meddling in elections. And now, uh, you know, they've been. Oh, man. Dude, this Freedom Convoy, and I know this is going to fucking incense people, but there are so many, and I'm not saying it was started by Russians, I'm not saying that, but <laughs> there are so many Facebook groups that, like, if you look into the group, like, peripheral to the actual Central Convoy group, that they're Russian-based. Like, like it's, there's, with the, the, the digital age, uh, interference is almost impossible to avoid. Oh, absolutely. With just with the way that um, in, like uh, elections are influenced by social media, like how easy is it to impersonate people on social media, right? Like, especially when you're a state sponsored actor, like, the, but not even impersonate a specific person, impersonate oh, and no, not even hide. Cre- like, create. you look at who the admin of the group is, and it's a hard Russian name of someone based <laughs> in Russia. It's like, well, that's and so yeah. But, you but, know, but that's what I'm saying, though. It's it's super easy just to, it, like, invent um, outrage at certain things. You know what I mean? Like, you can create mm-hmm. 20,000 mm-hmm. accounts, and all of a sudden, 20,000 people are pissed at one thing or another. It's really easy. And to then do. all of a sudden, another 80,000 or another, you Oh, know, yeah, and then real people jump, jump into that. Exactly, right? So you got yeah, one guy yeah. who's just, you know, generated hundreds of thousands of people into, um, not not even necessarily outrage, but just focus onto one certain topic. So it, it's it, it's... Like like we said, I don't think we can have fair elections realistically, so, or at least untainted elections is what I should we should say. exactly. I, and and I I'm firm believer that I mean there was a, quite a few states where Biden had had strong leads. Like I don't think that the, the election was as close as Trump supporters would want you to think. That said, um, what was it you said? What came over that article that we were, we were looking at? Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, like 147 Republicans said that they voted to say that the election results were not valid. So I think one one question we have to ask ourselves, and I think this should be the first question, is what if the Democrats hadn't have won the House? True. Yeah, that is actually true. If they were, well, see, I, I don't, I don't think there is precedent for overturning an election. I could be wrong. But a lot, I remember hearing in the news, it's just like you, legally they can't even do anything about it. You know what I mean? Like even if they had the votes, like it doesn't really matter. Um, I think the idea was well, that, that, that the- Pence wouldn't, you know, officially um, uh, count the votes or whatever and, um, you know, declare the winner. I think that was one of their plans. But I think there was already a backup that a Pence wouldn't do it, that there, it fell back on someone else and that person was a Democrat. So it was going to happen anyway. You know what I mean? 
uh, well, we'll see. Uh, so, okay, but, so yeah, exactly, hundred percent. But the article right. says, but the article says here, the one we're reading a USA Today article here, and it's just going over a couple of things that happened. But if the Capitol riot, if they had like one guy got into Nancy Pelosi's office, yeah, like if if they had killed Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence, then what would have happened? So, well, I, I think at that point we're we're looking like I don't even know how well, it would have went, went to it would have went to the chief of state. Well, That's but what we're, we're saying too is. there is that at that point, um, do you think Trump would try to make another grab for it? You know, like, or is he going to be like, "Whoa, this got out of hand"? Well, they they would have they would have like, I don't know, I don't know what happened because like, again, it's hard to say because the Democrats controlled the House, right? Yeah. And so, um, the one of the two things would have happened: they would have, uh, um, Biden would still become president. Or there would have been civil war. Yeah, that's that's what I was leaning more towards. Is if, if you have, end up having, um, you know, ki- the killing of politicians, uh, Democrat politicians especially, you're probably looking at civil war at that point, right? Because yeah, but like what else has, is going to happen? Who had who has who had the military side with? And based on how long their response took on the Capitol riots, I'm going to guess they probably were hoping that Trump was going to take power. And then technically he would have been chief of state, so they could have done whatever he told them to do at that point. Yeah, theoretically, um, I think that's a hard, hard call, right? Because it really depends. Like the United States is so big, so it really depends on like the closest military that are stationed I, I, to the capital, now, right? For, for that now, direction. Now, lots of people like the United States military is the largest employer in the world, but I feel like a lot of people who get into the military do so for the educational opportunities that they wouldn't have otherwise had. But I would love to see an examination of how the army voted. Yeah, I bet you it's overwhelmingly Republican. You think so? I think so. I I I mean, look it up, but I, I I would certainly say that the Republican rhetoric fuels the war machine, right? So, like, exactly, um, that's my. They're they're definitely interested. Like, at least in the top levels, are interested in that to to keep their funding going, but. Your average soldier, I don't know if it would be the same thing. Okay, so U.S. military voting, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton, 40% Donald Trump. Uh, really? Yeah, but with Joe Biden, 41% Biden, 37% mm. Donald Trump. So it was really close. Interesting that interesting that they picked Clinton. They didn't pick Clinton. <laughs> You said 41%. Oh, sorry. Um, 34% undecided, 20% Hillary Clinton. <laughs> oh, well, then that tells you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, and then 12% yeah, that's undecided. A, that's a big, the, that's a big, because you, I heard 41, and I'm like, oh, well, that's surprising. Hillary got 59% of the voter. Yeah, no, no, sorry. 69. She only got, she got, so yeah, Trump took it handily in the 2016 for the military, but then it was slightly edged to, uh, to Biden in the more recent election. Well, he's the military, right? Whereas so Biden, Trump yeah, was okay. a draft dodger, yeah, fair enough. Which and, is what, and honestly, which Trump is what also, I'm sure was messaging that they they used. Sure, oh, I would, Im- I would imagine so. But not only that, but I, I remember in 2016, Trump was all like, you know, about fixing the VA and like, you know, taking care of the vets and all that. And once they realized that totally didn't really happen, you know, they're probably just like, okay, never mind. Well, that's the other question: Does that military vote include veterans, or is it? I was I was thinking active service people. And this is active U.S. troops, it says, so yeah, not veterans. Because that would be an interesting one to see, too, how veterans voted. Uh, I would say it probably more skews Republican amongst older veterans, probably. Okay, okay. So, that would be my let's assumption. say, let's say they killed Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence. Disregarded <laughs> the, the, the election the extreme result. View. Well, uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the less saying, extreme saying, later. Disregarded, disregarded, disregarded the election results. That it said it wasn't, and those other ten Republicans and some Democrats got bullied into putting Trump back. Okay. okay. Trump gets in. What's his first act of office? I think he starts killing opponents. I think he starts. I think he goes hard Hitler, like no. I do. I think he. See, I think that's too think extreme. So? You, you gotta. I think what would happen, honestly, is like a state of emergency. So, like, there's no chance of the election being overturned again. So, he basically goes martial law. Would probably be my first um, thought. Something. Yeah, along and, and uses martial law to start eliminating opponents and jailing opponents. I think jailing was more I, likely than straight up ex- executing people. Right? That's pretty extreme. Well, it but starts like, with jailing. And then it starts with jailing. Them. Yeah, like exactly. It, it's I, a, I know it's a, you know. 
I know what you mean. Um, but but honestly, it, like even if you look at some extreme dictatorships, they didn't just straight up murder. Some of them did, but like they didn't just straight up murder everyone. There's a lot of political prisoners that happen. Well, you like try that, to you, know you I mean. try to right. It's Rolling Stone. You make up false charges. You you know like Putin's been doing it for years. Oh, all it, it would be is it would be like whatever. everybody involved in that election would get arrested, right? It was what it would be. It'd be like you did election fraud and you're in jail now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's exactly what they would do. Um, and I think that would cause some war. I do. I think that would be that would be enough. See, uh, at least cause riots of the Democrats. Riots, nature. maybe. See, but the thing is, is I don't know. Also, if the Democrats who owns guns in the United States, it, it, Republicans. That's the next you know question. what I'm saying? So I don't. I don't exactly. know that the Democrat supporters would be willing or capable enough to wage civil war. Well, the Republican supporter base, I think, would be much more capable of that. You know what I mean? That's very and much more willing for sure. So, um, I, I think the only way we're seeing civil war is if the if that Trump said, doesn't. That get said, in. that said, how many guns in New York? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, They're like well, I'm not saying the Democrats don't have guns because they hundred. It's America, you know. They hundred percent do. But um, like, I just think I feel like I feel like. The amount of long guns to pistols. Like, Democrats' gun of choice would be pistols. Uh, no, I don't think so, dude. Because You're, we're talking, like, we're, yeah, I don't think so, man. Like, there's, there's a lot of crime. You can't just, like, crime is where those pistols and shit come from in places like New York. Like, we're not, you're not having people open carrying pistols in New York. Like, that doesn't exist. New York's not, like, because you gotta look, there's literally states where you can carry an AR-15 into fucking Walmart, and it's, like, totally normal, you know what I mean? Like, you're allowed well, to do that. Well, Kyle Rittenhouse walked across the state holding the automatic rifle, so. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know if that was... They got away with it, so. I, yeah, like, I, I mean, mean, that was in the middle of a fucking <laughs> riot, but, um, but yeah, like, you, like, that's the thing, you can, in certain places, you can just literally walk around with your guns, like, 100%, and, um, there's other places where you can't even carry a gun on you, you know what I mean? Like, the United States hey, is so, so, so different like that. So, concealed carry permits in New York City? Are in legal? the city, just the city. 30,000 exist. That's, that's just... not that that's many. That's just... Man. You you say that, but then how many illegal guns are there? Oh, yeah, tons. I, I would <laughs> no, guess 13. 10 times that number. Oh, 100%. I would guess 300,000, yeah, if easily, not more. If not more. Like, like literally, there's like 20 million people in New York, man. Like, that's it's hard. Like, 30,000 guns is nothing. Well, that would be an interesting story. Like, who would groups like the Bloods and Crips side with in an American Civil War? I don't think they would side with anyone, you know what I mean? That's perfect. It's perfect. Just take advantage. Uh, exactly. Really it's good. perfect time yeah. for chaos at that point, right? You're for just looting. Gonna, and looting. Loot, yeah, yeah, rob, yeah, yeah. do whatever you want to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, it becomes Mad Max, basically, at that basically, point. Until, right. until the fascists show up and shut you down because you have no organization. Well, the thing uh, at that point, I think crime would actually, like, during a civil war, theoretically, I think crime would go down, right? Because if you have martial law, then the military is just going to walk in and shoot all the people that are criminals. So, like, I think that's going to actually... Um, I just I just don't think Trump's above authoritarianism. And I feel like that is, like, if Trump took a second term in that way, he'd be like, I'm untouchable. They couldn't touch me for grab, grab by the pussy. They couldn't touch me for literally breaking U.S. laws. They couldn't touch him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if he got installed at that after that, installed after that point, I, oh, I, yeah. I, I don't like think he he's coming back out. Even more, even more bold. Even oh, 100%. More and I also think before the end of his four-year term, he would have ended term limits. And See, I think that would be a big turnover as well. If if he hadn't been installed, I think term limits would have been removed. You think that? Yeah, term limits for sure would be removed. Um, And then the Democratic Party would probably be banned. Yeah, and well, not right away. Well, no, just think of that. Like, uh, if you're going to allow elections, no, 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 you know, do the the quote about Justin Trudeau and how he likes China. He's talking about their economy. Trump was talking about Jing, or Xi Jinping and talking about Putin and talking about how great of leaders they are yeah. and how he wishes he could be like them. And Putin got in. He's done. He did two elections after that. Back. Who knows? I don't. I'd have to go back and look at the first Russian election where he was elected and and the happenings around that. 
all the subsequent elections, and I'm doing hard bunny ears here, uh, <laughs> have been um, like they're 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 a farce. But oh, he does farce. the election to pretend that they have democracy, and I think that's exactly what would have happened. Yeah. I think Trump would have ended term limits, and then he would have done well, depending on how long he lived. Um, but you know, he would have done. Uh, I've done know, at least another elections. four four years, maybe eight years. I at least say, another. Right? Yeah, but that that next election would have been so false. But then like, who, who's in next? Right? Now the like, issues you're going to have right after him probably his son or son-in-law. Son. You know what I mean? Like one yeah. of those two guys yeah. are probably going to go in, or even maybe his daughter. Who knows? Like we could even have that, right? Like, oh, she's next. She's next. <laughs> you like, know? No, she is. She's I would, next it wouldn't surprise me if she yeah, if, if they ran her exactly, it w- and it would be. I a, wouldn't be surprised. A pretty smart. Move I wouldn't be surprised honest. if they run her. In the next election, yeah. Oh, instead neither. of Trump, I can I see that. Like, I, I think Trump's trying to make it look like he's going to run, but I think he's going to set up somebody else. I really do. I, and I, well, I, there's no one else that could be besides his children. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then they're so they're loved just as much as he is amongst the the Trump supporters, right? So plus she's a woman. Plus she's a woman, exactly. Right, and so that'll give her at least some on the fence votes. It's like. Do I vote for the old white guy or do I vote for this, you know, middle-aged woman who wants to make change and isn't afraid to take no for an answer and American freedom? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, right? uh, yeah, I think we can see that for sure. And they're not, obviously, okay. I really don't see Biden running for another one. So I think he's done. I don't long either. Term. So who knows who's going to try to take his place? Maybe Pelosi. And I'm too, oh, man, could you imagine that? Two no. women against each other? That would be interesting. That would be a smart move um, by the Democrats as a counter, though. I don't think so. I like think Pelosi's, Pelosi's not as well liked. liked. Yeah, I do. She's agree. not as well liked. I know. I do agree. She's but you well could liked. have what's her name I, I, and um, eight, or what's her um, what do you call? She's too radical. I know you're going to say she's too. She's too radical. She's too radical. And she's AOC. Not old that's what it you is. Have to be AOC. thirty-five. Is she that but young? She's not. She's too. Ra- um, I think. Coming up in the next election, she might be old enough. But she she's thirty-two. Wasn't in the last yeah, one. she'll be old enough, dude. She'll be just old enough. Will she, or will she be thirty-four? Oh shit! Um, when's she the next election? She might be thirty-four. Uh, well, what was the last one? Twenty twenty-one or twenty 2020? twenty? Twenty twenty. End of twenty twenty. It's November for twenty twenty. Yeah. So it would be no. She November. Can't. She won't be. She'll be just not old enough. Just old enough. Now that's what I thought. And also, she's too radical. She won't. She won't. When she's too radical, like. I love her. Oh, hold on, though. Hold on. But it says um, she would turn 35 just before Inauguration Day, therefore would be uh, legally qualified for office. Yeah. So she wouldn't be old uh, enough during the election, but she would be if she was the Democrat, elected. The Democrat Party will never... One, the Democrat Party will never support. One. She well, yeah, that's it's true. She like, like again, the Democrats d- aren't socialists. You know what I mean? Like they don't no. want socialism so at she's, all. She's and, she's and she's more radical than Bernie Sanders. Like like in a, in some ways. So it's like if an old white dude who's been at it for forty years and has been being ignored most of that time. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I don't think she like. I really just don't think. She's not going to be the next. Pick. No, yeah, you're not going like, to. A Latina woman is too diverse for the Democrats. You know? she, it's not that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's for America. It's, it's part of it. That's part of it. But it's her views. Her views. She'll be nailed as a socialist, and she won't. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She won't deny it. Whereas Bernie kind of tried to spin. His stuff constantly is, no, this is just good policy. Like, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. what you need to do to sell the American. As soon as you say socialism, you've lost 60% of Americans. If not more, yeah, I agree. If not more. So, she needs to grow up. She needs to, and I'm not, I'm not trying, I love AOC. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love AOC. I follow her social media. I love her. But she will not win an election and she will not be selected by the Democrats until she's about 50 years old and she'll have to learn to play the fence a lot more. Oh, well, think of it. Uh, like, you can't, even in Canada, which is, you know, markedly more socialist than the United States is mm-hmm. and probably will ever be, you still can't even really mm-hmm. say socialism if you want to get elected, you know what I mean? You bring that well, up and then you're just like, oh, you're a Marxist, like, immediately, so. Yeah, you you're can- a Marxist. <laughs> Do you like your, like, a guy commenting on my Facebook page, I, I you know, talked about progressive taxation on his home, he's like, 
do you want your hammer or your sickle? It's like, <laughs> really? Like, uh, and I amazing. like tried to explain to them, like, no, like, what I'm advocating for is actually classic liberalism. Socialism would say, I'm just going to take your house and we'll distribute them evenly. <laughs> Liberalism says, I'm going to disincentivize certain behavior by raising taxes on that behavior. That is like textbook liberalism. <laughs> yeah, people, that's the thing. People don't actually understand anything. People don't socialism. know. People don't understand what socialism is anymore. It's either you're socialist or you're Republican. Which, what does that even mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, That's such an extreme, um, such an extreme ends there. So it's, uh, we're, we're getting, again, we're getting a little bit off topic, but. Um, I, I don't think we are. I think this is all, this is all important information that's related into it. So I think, so let, let's take a so step back. We've kind of gone at the, what if Trump won? What if, you know, or not won, but, you know, violent overthrow. Them got in. Violent overthrow. Um, to me, there's no other way that it couldn't have gotten more violent, one way or the other. I think that's one thing that you. Oh, and I certainly could have gotten more violent. Jailing Democrats, civil war. I don't know, but it wouldn't have ended as peacefully as we do now. And, and well, I think America is easily talk- on a slippery slope to a police state, right? Like, like any any like right now, obviously, there's calls for defunding the police and stuff like that. But like, it easily mm-hmm. could slip into a police state. Like the the police is armed, just like any friggin' other nations military you know what i yeah. mean like they, they have a lot of hardware they're very yeah. willing at least I, I guess social media probably use that it, but, they're, but they're willing to use the hardware they're willing to bend the law to their favor um you know what i mean so i, I think it's it's a pretty slippery slope and if any leader wanted to tip it that way i don't think it would take a whole lot um, well and we're, one thing we're seeing here in canada too with the convoy is that you know right-wing protests don't get the same treatment how do you mean there's not the same crackdown. I mean, if all those protesters in Ottawa right now were BLM or uh, Indigenous rights advocates or something, you really don't think the billy clubs and the, the shields and the riot gear wouldn't be coming out? I don't think so. Um, like, because uh, you're looking I, at... I mean, look, I mean, the pipeline protests prove you wrong. No, see, like, that's, again, that's different, though. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Like, if like in Ottawa, they're not really threatening any infrastructure. And like we said before, like, Parliament's not even sitting right now. There's no one there. Well, actually, now... They're, 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 they're definitely uh, screwing uh, up traffic and stuff like that downtown. Don't get me wrong, but that's, that's corporations and small businesses that are suffering from that, not really the city or the, the government. So but if you're looking at pipelines and, like, uh, clear cutting stuff like that it's you're you're disrupting industry which it which i would say is definitely different and canada does not like well i mean when industries that's the reason that's why they, they start busting shit down but gofundme canceled their uh their money for that reason term eight which was the violence and 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 destruction of property that's that's literally why they've they because and they reached a statement that it started out as a peaceful protest but has now become an occupation which they won't support well, I mean, uh, yeah, like, I mean, if, if they haven't gone home and they haven't been able to achieve anything, so I don't really know what, what they're doing at this point. Because, like we said, there's not there's no one there to even listen to them. Man, <laughs> like, there's protests it's, planned at each uh, provincial legislature. Apparently, there's one in front of the Saskatchewan legislature today. And two of my friends that are in Saskatchewan, that were in Saskatchewan, it's either Saskatoon or Regina. I can't Regina. remember which one's their capital. Regina's the Okay, capital. in outside the Regina building, they're hearing honks and... They also heard gunshots. Like, I think people shooting off into the air. Yeah. But still, that's concerning. That's certainly concerning. <laughs> you know, you, like, it's really dumb, honestly. You know, if, if you know anything about the safe handling of guns, you don't fucking shoot a gun in the air. It's stupid. I'm going to guess they're probably Americans. Well, they they wouldn't have been able to get across the border, most likely, right? Like, I, I well, I mean, yeah. I guess they could if they're vaccinated, but, like, are, are they doing that? You know, are those protesters vaccinated? Not likely. Yeah. So what happened? Versus what we just talked about could happen if Trump was reinstalled. I think a lot of times we talk about political issues and we like go to the wall for these political issues, which is good. Yeah, we go. To but the at the end of the day, you turn off Facebook, you turn off social media, you turn off the news. It's not going to affect your day to day life. Well, actually, that, Trump, that was something if, if, I wanted to talk about. I, I finish. No, your, hear me finish out. Your, don't, hear me your, out. Your hear me out. Hear me out. If Trump had overthrown the government in the states, that would not have been the case. Okay, well, that's what I'm trying finish to finish your point because I actually am going to refute that. But your your day to day, your day to day would have changed. Would it, it would have, have been affected by well, if if you're a minority, probably if Maybe. you're a Democrat, probably. Maybe. <laughs> um, in terms of like if when people start being jailed, when people start being 
harassed um, when people politically. Um, that's when you do start to see uh, a change in the day to day in 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 actual life freedoms. Well, like, so you can. Let, let, let me do my point. So I was I was going to say the exact opposite. Like for your like, what does your average person do in the average day? Like they get up in the morning, they go, they get in their car, maybe get some gas, go to work, get a coffee on the way to work, maybe work for their day, come home. Just go to sleep, you know what I mean? Like after chilling at mm-hmm. home, or maybe they might like, go out to dinner with friends, whatever. Nothing too mm-hmm. crazy. As long as you don't stop people from doing that, I think in general they might gripe about it a little bit, but they're not. But I gonna, think they're not. They're not going to violently rise up. Like so, you can have. But a I agree state, that martial like, law. If martial law happened, Trump declared martial law, that wouldn't happen. No, you wouldn't but, but be just able think to of, just go to a restaurant. You could, you could. Just think of this. Like, let's say I'm just chilling in my house. I want to go to a restaurant, but I have to go through a military checkpoint. That's martial law, you know what I mean? But if they let me through the checkpoint and I go to the fucking restaurant and I come home, I'm, no, you know what no. I mean? Like, like, don't get no. me wrong. Like, no. mo- most, that's people, a, that's, most people that would take will it, affect I your day to day. It will, will affect and your day to day. Most people won't do and anything. It, and about it will affect on who you are and what your beliefs are. Absolutely. Because that right. military checkpoint, that's what they're going to be looking into. And if you don't fit the right mold, you will be detained. Yes. <laughs> and that will affect your day to day. I Yes, for the people that get detained. But I guarantee you, man, like 80% of people just fall in line. Almost guarantee it. Like, but again, that the, will people aren't ballsy to enough. The people life. aren't ballsy enough to step oh, up. I, like I, that. I, that, I'm not talking about people rising up. That is not what I'm talking about. That's what I'm what saying. I they're going to lay down and is, take it. Yeah, they're going to lay down and take it. But for you to say that their day to day life won't be affected by no, no, that? No, 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 no. It's but like, like in an setting up military way. checkpoints. I don't care if you get through the checkpoint. Doesn't matter. Setting up that military checkpoint is a change in your day to day routine, and it is a limitation of your freedom, which we do not have with the Biden election result. Oh, 100%. That's what I'm, I'm not saying it would ch- not change your day. I'm sa- but it's not really that drastic if you think about it, you know what I mean? It's like prob- It is. Once it- you start setting up military checkpoints, it affects your day to day. When you can't <laughs> And I'm not talking about philosophical or without the government scrutinizing what you're I doing. I understand what you're saying. But I'm not and I'm not refuting that. I'm just saying like physically your day is going to go on, you know what I mean? Like you can still get groceries, you can still go to the store. I know, but what I all I'm saying is the day to day Maybe not. You can't get past that checkpoint. You can't get your groceries. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I, like most people would, like, though. You know what I mean? Like dissidents are going to be in the minority. Checks, checks would have been put on freedom, and once checks oh, yeah. are put on, on like, that kind of freedom, th- then, then dude, then look at half of the country. Like, there's so many countries where that is the exact fact of life, and you know, life goes on there. You know what I mean? Like it, it's. Like, I, I understand what you're again, saying, but again, not if you're detained. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does if you're in prison, but um, but you know, yeah. It, but yeah, that's not and what. And then I'm when saying. you're jailing, when you're jailing twenty percent of your population, yeah, like <laughs> I'm not advocating for I mean, this. By the way, <laughs> I guess the question is: Is that any different than what's going on right now in the United States? Well, that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, again, it's where they're only they're sitting on a knife's edge from that. You know what I mean? Like, and 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 so, like, honestly, so are we in some cases. Like, you think the government doesn't know exactly what you're doing like, oh, on a general at day? At the start like, of the pandemic, Trudeau tried to give himself executive power. Yeah, like the government, the very start the government of the pandemic. is looking. He's at like, what we, you're we doing. need to supersede the house. I've been declared emergency orders. We need to supersede the house, and we just need to let this government make decisions to get us through the pandemic. Literally, what he said, and the NDP and the Conservatives and, and Greens and Bloc were like. Fuck no! <laughs> yeah, Which I don't think like, so, bud. And that's why he called an election because so, he wanted to. He wanted to push that through, and he failed again. Yeah, and he failed again, which is concerning. Like I'm, and again, I'm not saying everything that this freedom convoy is is pushing for is wrong. It's just that the basis of the people that like their 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 demands the are done. It. That's the problem, dude. Their their, their demands yeah. are literally for the government to step uh-huh. down, and then le- like representatives of the convoy and the senate would rule an interim government like that is literally never That's, going to happen so yeah. your demands yeah. are obviously are like, like right off the we will start like, open firing on you before that happens like a thousand at that percent. point it's like, <laughs> yeah, like literally like they, they are way more likely to get like absolutely cracked down and murdered by the government than well the i don't know why they haven't out. brought out this tear gas and rubber bullets yet like 
again, it would be like anywhere else. Well, you like, know they, why they're man. now they, they, officially like it's it's because they're white. No, it's, and they're privileged. No, it's, it's not. Yes, that. it is. It's not that. It's, if it was it's all indigenous that... people acting in the exact same way in Ottawa right now, they would be rubber bullets. There would be riot gear. There would be tear gas, and they would be dispensing and arresting people. I can tell you right fucking now because there has been protests like that in Ottawa, and that is exactly what happened. I don't. Th- I, I, like, I think the reason they're not doing it is because it would cause more problems than it would solve. You would put down one protest and you would spring up 40 more. That's why they're not. And I agree with that and that's that's what it comes down to is that indigenous people make up less than 3% of the country and the vast part of the country doesn't give a fuck because you know what? What did we discover? 2,400 um, dead children in residential schools? Who's talking about that in, in, anymore? No one. Like like I don't mean to say that. Like there is people talking about it and, and stuff but it's not news. It's not news anymore and the largely non-Indigenous population, I'm not just talking white, I'm talking every other race, because Canada is a very multicultural place, and people come, there's a lot of first-generation Canadians who have no association with that. It's totally it's disassociated for that, true, right? Yeah. Um, and so, with this, I agree with what you're saying, because it plays into um, a certain conservative sentiment that uh yeah, would make it would make it worse. I, what I don't understand is why are they protesting at the uh, the Sas- ugh, Saskatchewan or Regina legislature building when literally Scott Mo came out yesterday and said that he's ending vaccine mandates. <laughs> well, I don't think he's ending border mandates, right? Because I don't think that's a provincial thing; that's a federal thing. So but the, he's he said that. But well, I mean, Saskatchewan I this already is the has some of the convoys. Least They're not clear. Yeah. I mean, you got one guy that's. You know, talking about how Muslims are depopulating the white race in Canada. Like, that's <laughs> what Pat King or whatever his name is. Yeah, like, the yeah. people that have organized are actual white supremacists and, and maverick party people. That's, that's, that, the, all the people that, that formed this convoy were either involved in the maverick party or are, are known white supremacists. It's so, a, it's a and, ridiculous and, yeah, protest. Like, I support the right to, for people to protest. That's why I'm not. You know, telling people yeah. to shut it down, but it is, it is, it was dumb from the get go just because the demands were unreasonable. And all you're really doing is blocking up the streets when there's literally nothing. Like, I would actually support it more if Parliament was sitting. You know what I mean? Like, at least you're actually exactly. doing something then. Like, you're literally, you're not doing anything. You're just clogging the streets. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, and the people of Ottawa are going to snap back. I've already oh, seen already vandalism yeah, of, pe- there's of people vandalizing of vans and say, yeah. get out of Ottawa. Yeah, we don't want you here. Yeah. yeah. This would be and fucking Toronto annoying. Today like, ima- be, imagine- Toronto today is going to be interesting. And I, I almost guarantee you they're going to crack down harder on the counter-protesters. And I almost guarantee the like the, the convoy is going to play the classic, like, oh, we're just being peaceful. I can't tell you how many fucking anti-vaxxers I've seen post on Facebook uh, it's okay to agree to disagree. Let's just stay friends. It's like not if it's a life and death thing. No, it's like you well, know but you got to be like, careful though, man. Because if they're if you're an anti protester and you start breaking windows and shit like that, then you are going to get cracked down on. You know what I mean? So well, who's to say that they're not going to put people on that side? We're gonna just like you know what I mean. They like, might, you know, I they don't might, know. but it, like at the same, like you can't, you can't. Uh, the, that's not the police's problem. Like it, you know what I mean. Like if windows start getting broken, you have to stop it. It's their, it, you have to follow the yeah. rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it does suck when yeah. ideologically you have the, you know, or at least morally you have the high ground, but you do, you lose that high ground as soon as you start any sort of destruction mm-hmm. or violence. It's just the way that it is, unfortunately. Like, and you mm-hmm. can agree with that or you, or you don't, but, you know, you're going to be the one who's in cuffs after you fucking smash a window. So, like, come on. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. I agree. Um, okay. So, I um, think... Well, I wanted to talk about... Bring it back um, on. To, the, yeah, to, to the American thing. I wanted to talk about... So, like, we talked about, hey, it's going to be super violent. Like, let's say they murdered Pelosi, they murdered Pence, you know, Trump took mm-hmm. power under mm-hmm. martial law. Let's take it back a step and go, um, let's say more people supported the idea that it was actually a false election and there was enough votes to turn it over and it happened, you know, air quotes, legally. Um, and 80% they, of Republicans thought that the election was stolen. Exactly, right? So let's say the Republicans did a little bit better in the House. Um, they had enough votes to, let's say, turn it over. 
um, you know, like, more of America uh, supported it. So there legislatively, was, yeah, exactly. Legislatively, exactly. they're turning it over. There was more public support for it. You know, um, the key thing you said there, though, is the Republicans won the House. That's the one that, like, I, I feel like the way you're telling the details, that's just one of many. Yeah, that's the key detail. That, that, yeah, well, they would have to be right. Like, they would have to have the votes to actually do it. So, um, so let's say that does happen, and there's a peaceful transition. Um, well, see, would, would there have been um, a capital storming at all if they had the House? You know what I mean? No, there wouldn't have been. So let's say they're what they're, they don't have the House, but the storming intimidated enough Democrats into turning it over. So let's go with that scenario, right? Uh, so Republicans controlled the House. They didn't. Um, uh, Biden, but... Oh, they they okay. didn't control, I, but yeah. when the when the um, when the storming of the building happened, a bunch of Democrats were like, "Oh, okay, like you know, it was fake," and they and they voted to overturn it with the Republicans. Let's say that happens. Uh, well, I, what about what about Republicans controlled the House, um, and uh, the Capitol riot still happened? Okay, like like Biden won the election. Yeah, Biden 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 won the election, but the Republicans controlled the House. And then the riots happen because they, whatever, they didn't want whatever, like whatever. I still think. So after the riots, then the Republicans vote to overturn it. So I still, yeah, I still think, I think without, with or without the riot, if the Republicans controlled the House, they're overturning the election. Yeah. And they've already, they've already said, dude, like there's multiple sources that said if in the, in the midterms, the Republicans take the House, they're going to impeach Biden. (laughs) On what grounds? They'll find it because they believe. That the the democratic impeachment of Donald Trump was a witch hunt. They yeah. they believe that they believe that there was nothing. It was it was merely them using their power to try and force out the president of the United States. So now they now their thought process is well we're going to do the exact same thing when really there was a treasure trail of shit that Trump could have been accused of. It. Yeah, no, I, I yeah I agree with that. Um, but actually, I think you're probably right on that fact because it's it's going to get a lot worse in terms of. Uh, I agree. I think it's going to get worse. Yeah. The division's getting worse, and yeah. I think they're going to be think, coming I to each other. I honestly think in the next 100 time. years, I don't know how soon or how late it's going to be. There will be another American Civil War. I almost or an, almost unless they it. drastically restructure the way their government works. Yeah, I would probably agree. <laughs> Yeah, and it's yeah. Uh, you know so, what it could happen here too, man. Because like it's it's not just Canada, United States; it's literally the entire world. Like we're it's being well, not the entire world, but let's say the Western world, the West. Um, but yeah. there's a wedge being driven between people, right? Like it's you're either left, right, and it's getting more divided, and the people in the center are just are getting isolated, right? Because if you sit, you know, slightly slightly right of center, or slightly left of center, then nobody likes you, right? The left doesn't like you, the right doesn't mm-hmm. like you, like so people are getting much more mm-hmm. marginalized. Mm-hmm. 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. So let's kind of do a recap and then end the video. So okay. So scenario one. Uh the Capitol riot's successful. Um they kill Pelosi, they kill Pence, uh, and Trump becomes a totalitarian dictator. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh the same thing, except Pelosi and Pence don't get killed. Um, I guess that's the Biden outcome. Um, and then the final one is Republicans take the House in the midterms previously, and the election happens for President Biden wins, and Republicans vote to overthrow, yes or no? Um, I think they, they probably would have, yeah. Or at least I think would. Yeah. I think would. I think I think uh, let's go to our eight ball answers here. Signs point to yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I think those are our three. It's like the only Biden outcome I think was like I think if the Democrats didn't have the House when during that election, it would have been overturned. And I and I I bet my bottom fucking dollar that if the Republicans take the House in the midterms, that there will be a challenge to Biden's presidency. I think so. Right? I agree. I, and Without I, a shadow of a yeah. doubt. And Biden, honest, unfortunately, I don't think would possibly survive it because he, his, you know, his ratings are down. You know what I mean? People don't really like yeah, him that much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think that that's kind of where we leave it is uh, those those three things. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next election and where the future goes, kind of with American politics. Because yeah. I think I think they're on the brink of a tipping point. I really do. And yeah, it's either, uh, as you say, a restructuring of their system. 
for fascism. Yeah. Like I, I really like there's some I think type that of authoritarianism in any way. Yeah. There's some type of false or like false democracy. Yeah. Like, like, false. like you can argue that's now, but I'm talking a Putin democracy. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you know what Putin is doing? And then I'm sorry to get off on tangent here. He's setting himself up to be czar. He's been rebuilding a bunch of the old czarist monuments. He rebuilt uh, the the palace of whatever the main czarist palace. He rebuilt it. It's all completely rebuilt. And I don't know if he'll ever take the term of czar, but if you look at some of the things he's done in the past year, he's trying to transition himself out of the president role and more into like a what he would what he would portray as a constitutional monarchy role, that like a father of Russia, yeah. kind of thing. But it won't be constitutional. It'll be a, a, like an absolute. authoritarian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting. I mean, it does like, and it, the thing is, is basically that now you would just be putting like a, you know, taking the mask mm-hmm. off it and making it, um, you know, legitimate. I guess. Well, and then and then you would argue, well, it's still democracy because we still pick a president. Well, guess who would determine who the president is? <laughs> yeah. Well, at least he would approve who gets to run, right? Which in that case, uh, yeah. What does it yeah. matter? Anyway? Yeah, and then just jail opponents to against his boy, you know, like yeah. what he's been doing for himself. Yeah, it's it's so, pretty crazy anyways, over there. Yeah. So but again, anyways, I think we're like we're well on the way to that as well. Uh, unless we're careful. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I think this is a good, uh, decent episode. I think you would love to hear people's input on what they think or scenarios that we did not approach that are possible outcomes as well. Um, but otherwise, I think that that's pretty much all we got to say today about uh, the Capitol riots. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening, and catch you on the next one. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Exactly. Have a great day. 